The first game that we really had associated with X2 is Star Wars Empire War, so the real-time strategy genre, especially space strategy games, are something that we're big fans of here. Unfortunately, for the last decade or so, the real-time strategy genre hasn't really received a lot of attention from big publishers. Luckily, there are a lot of indie developers that have started taking up the job of creating new, deep, real-time strategy games for people to enjoy, and today we're going to be talking about one of those, Stellar Warfare. This is a game being developed by one-man studio Tense Games, which focuses on space combat but with a pretty significant twist. One of the main selling points for this game, at least for me, is the fleet designer. Unlike what you'd typically expect from a real-time strategy game, rather than having a set of defined factions, the player is able to make their own fleet using different base hulls to make up to five ships, which then become the types of ships that you use in combat. When you're playing throughout the game, you'll be able to come across different components for your ships, and then you're able to fill every slot on those hulls with whatever you want to fit your playstyle or whatever you want that fleet to do for the upcoming matchup. There's a pretty incredible breadth of options here, and there's a lot of depth that can come from this, and a lot of experimentation that you can do with the various options available to you. The fact that you unlock more of the components by playing through different games means that you have a relatively manageable set to start off with. There's a default loadout of ships that functions pretty well on its own, a rather generalist version of it, and it stops you from being overwhelmed by all the options available to you until you're more familiar with what you want to get out of your ships. In terms of the actual combat and gameplay mechanics once you're in a match, the game is most similar to games like Homeworld and Supreme Commander. Those are kind of the two that I would point to as the main inspirations for the game, and which the developer has said are big inspirations for him as well. Much like Homeworld, the game takes place in a full 3D map, meaning you're able to take advantage of not just horizontal planes, but you can also take advantage of the fact that space is three dimensions. You can go up and down on top of being able to go just horizontally like most games do. This is something that was relatively unique to Homeworld in the past and was one of the main things that made Homeworld Homeworld, something that other space RTS combat games like Star Wars Empire at War, or even Battlefleet Gothic Armada kind of lack. It can definitely take some getting used to, especially if you're not familiar with Homeworld. There are some hotkeys that really make it easier to navigate this space, but they're not always super clearly available. But once you're used to it, it does feel very smooth, and within a game or two you'll probably get a sense for what you're doing. The game is primarily intended for 1v1 human versus human matchups, but recently there was also a single player mode introduced, which is a wave survival game, where you are basically using your fleet to survive as long as possible against hordes of AI ships. It's worth noting that the game isn't fully available yet. It is on early access through Patreon. We will link in the description to the Patreon page for Tense Games. And it also has a Discord server where online games are organized and the developer makes the builds available to the patrons. The game is going to be available on Steam as soon as they reach a point where they feel like they're ready for early access. But for now, you can add it to your wishlist or you can support the developer on Patreon for access to builds as it's made. So again, everything that you've seen in this video is still in some ways a work in progress. But having played the game myself, I can tell you that if this is a genre you're interested in, you'll probably find a lot to enjoy with this game. One of the things that I know the developer is working on right now is focusing a bit on the readability of the game. So different UI elements and redoing some of the older UI elements to make it all a little bit more accessible. So there's a lot of stuff that's been done for clarity recently. There are the icons that kind of overlay ships to give a better idea of where everything is, which also helps give it more of a Supreme Commander feel, in my opinion. But that, along with various other parts of the game, are going to be improving as the developer goes along. So far, some elements of that have seemed like the main lacking point for the game when I was playing. There are these abandoned stations called Zabu Gens that are around the map which is automatically generated every time that you play the game, and I wasn't able to immediately tell if the Zabugens were actually being controlled by me and giving me their benefits or not, and that's the kind of thing that I think is going to be a main focus for the game going forward, so that is reassuring to me at least. Other than a few minor quibbles like that, the gameplay is very clear and it's pretty easy to tell what's going on while you're playing. You can see right off the bat what kind of weapons are being used by your ships and enemy ships based on their color. Uh, each color denotes a role. But one other thing that I would like to see change going forward is that there isn't really a good way to tell what kind of hull components the enemy is using. 
when you're actually in game. And I would like that to be something that would possibly come up in the future. I don't know that there's any plans for that to happen, but I think it would be a bit easier to kind of tell where you're going with your own fleet and what you need to use against the enemy fleet with a bit more information on that kind of thing. On the whole though, again, this is definitely a game that I recommend you check out if you're interested in the genre, and I think on a broader point, that supporting small indie games like this is really the best way we can start to see a resurgence in the industry. Apart from just being fun in their own right, they show that there is an audience for this kind of thing, and raises the chance that maybe we'll get another AAA title in the future. On top of that, the added benefit of indie games usually being a lot more affordable for people, they tend to be able to take more risks with game design and try more creative things than a AAA game might feel safe doing. The fleet design element of this game is something you may also see to a certain extent in games like Galactic Civilization, or other games like that with some amount of ship customization, or Stellaris. But it's rare to see it in this amount of depth with this amount of content for a real-time strategy game, which usually sees a lot more solidly defined factions rather than being dependent on the kind of ship combinations that you're doing on your own. And in my opinion, that kind of experimentation is always worth giving a shot. So again, if you are interested in giving this game a try, there'll be some links in the description. You can either go to the Patreon page for Tense Games, where you can pledge and get an early copy of the game right now, or you can wishlist the game on Steam. If you'd like to see more of the game in action, I recently did a stream where I interviewed the developer and he showed me a bit around the game and talked about some of his plans for the future, which I will also beg Ek and Charlie to put in the description. And if you guys are interested, we may do a couple games ourselves here on X2. But until then, I've been Cory. Hope you've enjoyed the video and hope to see you next time. What's that, Charlie? Yes, I'm going back in my box.